Shares of Palo Alto Networks are surging up more than 3% after beating on the top and bottom lines, giving strong guidance, announcing an additional share buyback. And joining us now is Byron Dieter, partner at Bessemer Venture Partners. Byron, always good to see you. So, I mean, a, a positive signal, another one for enterprise software here, but there's been uh, a lot of difference, dispersion in stock outcomes between some of the larger players and the smaller ones. How do you, how do you sort through that? Well, first off, uh, great to be back, John, and congrats to Palo Alto Networks on another impressive quarter. Um, the machine there continues to crank. Uh, they may have gotten a little bit of a tailwind from CrowdStrike and their own fumbles this quarter, uh, but I think more of it's just their own execution. And uh, I hope as you show their charts over uh, today and this week that you actually zoom out and also give them a multi-year look. Uh, since Nikesh has joined uh, over six years ago, whether it's the one-year run here over 40%, or the five-year run, which has them over 400%. It's been a heck of a story. And the crooks keep innovating out there, so security is needed. It's also one of those first categories that's been able to adopt AI. And so they're using modern technology for organizational defenses now, and it's showing tremendous success. The cash flow generation of this company is fantastic. And you see from the prior segment, AMD and NVIDIA and the like, they're rushing to respond to the demand uh, from the pull-through of software folks like Palo Alto Networks as they continue to increase consumption. And so it's an example of this virtuous cycle that's playing out in tech right now at the front edge of all things AI. What do you think the uh, financial legacy of CrowdStrike is going to be? That stock is, you know, off the lows from the beginning of the month, but it, it was smacked pretty hard. Do you think some other companies might benefit? Uh, are security companies in general, even in the startup space, more attractive? So I, on the small scale, yes. Uh, it's always this game of cat and mouse, and inevitably there will be breaches, there will be downtime, there will be system issues. And so they took it on the chin and, and in hindsight could have handled it a lot better, but it's a great company. They will survive, they will recover. Um, it created a short-term opportunity for challengers. And again, it'll be interesting to, to parse through the notes um, in the earnings announcement to see if they give some credit to that. But I do think there are new vectors of attack and there are new use cases for AI in the defenses, which is what's creating the startup opportunities. And there will always be pure play opportunities that are created. But you see the continued execution from the largest um, that organizations want to buy from consolidated vendors and they want a system-wide approach. And so I think the answer is this sector will continue to grow and it will benefit both the small and the large. I still remember Mount SAS and you know, your thesis around enterprise uh, software and the value there. Some of the medium to smaller companies, a few of them have started to perk up. I'm thinking about Shopify here, but it certainly hasn't been on the scale of the hyperscalers. But is this thing in enterprise software smaller, if not small enterprise software finally turning around? So I think one, the definition of what is cloud today is expanding. So coincidentally, we're actually adding Palo Alto Networks to the BVP NASDAQ Emerging Cloud Index today because they've transitioned to become a majority cloud business. So more of the legacy vendors and on-prem vendors are coming over. But what I think we're waiting for in the Mount SAS example and in the broader cloud index is to see if this rolls down to the mid-market companies. Right now, it's been the Magnificent Seven, the $100 billion plus entities, and the hardware vendors per the NVIDIA run-up and the AMD discussion earlier that have really been the beneficiaries of this early AI wave. And so the question that we're waiting for is, one, will challengers emerge for NVIDIA and will that 85% hardware market share start to erode over time? And then on the software side, will the application vendors start to get that tailwind benefit from AI? We're seeing it on the private side. We see it with OpenAI and Anthropic and Canva and Service Titan and Figma and a lot of these companies that are uh, adapting rapidly to embrace AI and they're getting real sell-through as a result. We think that will also come to the mid-market public cloud companies that are quick and nimble in embracing it. Well, that's kind of what I wonder about. I was talking to a CEO earlier today, the CEO of Amplitude, uh, about that. He's arguing that, you know, for employees looking to sign on, they're a better value either than the startups with high valuations or the hyperscalers with high valuations. But might the smaller companies lose out as, uh, as AI plays out at the application layer? Uh, it is a battle that's playing out faster than anyone expected. 
And the interesting dynamic is someone like Amplitude's caught in the middle, where they're a challenger, but they're also an incumbent subject to some disruption. And so we're getting pitches every day from companies that are going to be a next generation of Cloud Wave 1 or Cloud Wave 2. You look at an incumbent like Salesforce, it's a 24-year-old stack right now. They keep innovating, but their core business has a lot of legacy characteristics. And there are companies that are coming at them for their marketing cloud, their services cloud, the sales cloud with leapfrog technologies. And we think the history of tech will repeat itself, but in a faster cycle now, where net new companies will come from zero to hundreds of millions in ARR over you know single digit years and become the new leaders in the cycle for those who don't adapt and uh, embrace this transition. Yeah, keeps you guys busy on Sand Hill Road and keeps us busy near Wall Street too. Byron Dieter from Bessemer, thank you.